The coronavirus continues to dominate the headlines, and among the companies taking action, Apple. The tech giant has temporarily closed all 42 of its stores in China. Joining us right now is Dan Ives. He's managing director at Wedbush Securities, and Dan, it's good to see you. Great to be here. Let, let's talk about what this means. Uh, 42 stores, maybe not huge, but what, what is the impact for Apple? I mean, after we've seen Starbucks close over 2,000 stores and, and many other companies doing the same. Yeah, look, I think you got to differentiate between the headlines and the fundamental impact. You know, right now, if you look in China, we're, we're talking about one to 200,000 units where maybe this could, you know, really hit them in the quarter. And if you look, they gave a pretty wide range in terms of guidance uh, last week. I think worst case that we see today, about 3% of units, potentially about a million iPhones, if this continues, could move out from the March to the June quarter. But at this point, you know, in terms of all the work we've done in China, I think it's contained relative to the fundamental impact. I think Bark's worse than a bite so far for Apple. You're assuming deferral, not a loss of those sales. They just come later. Exactly. I mean, for us, it's more about timing. I look at, you know, all the supply chain, what we see. I think you also have to take a step back. There's a supply chain piece. There's a demand piece. Demand 20% iPhones coming out of China. So I think at this point, that continues to be very strong in terms of 60, 70 million iPhones in China in a window of an upgrade opportunity. On the supply chain, if this goes into mid, late February, then this becomes a broader issue. It becomes a broader issue because if they can't get the components needed for the parts, they're not going to be able to keep up with demand even with a, with a drop in demand from China? That's exactly it. So I think the, the demarcation line, what I view is... So it's not we, the retail stores. It's what happens with the, the supply chain and the factories. Well, exactly. Because on the retail, if you look, the vast majority in China is online. So right. from a retail perspective... Big deal. It, but, but even though investors over the weekend a lot, you know, trying to understand the impact, it's still very very small. But on just like you hit the nail on the head, if you look at the supply chain, that's the issue if it continues into the next three, four weeks. And we've learned from the trade war that moving supply chains is easier said than done, especially if you're going to be doing it under duress when everybody else would be trying to do it yeah, at the same that's, time. And that's the worry right now. I mean, here is you just got over U.S. China. You're starting to pop the champagne. Now, all of a sudden, you have another major worry. Investors trying to understand the impact. In our opinion on Apple, we continue to buy in this weakness. I look at the super cycle thesis and just look at the math behind the numbers right here. It's not and, a lot of weakness. We Let's just small. look at that chart. Yeah. That is not an awful lot of weakness. It's blink. Still it's trading blink. at $307, which is not quite, but almost double where it was a year ago. Yeah, we think $400 a year, and then it continues used to be our thesis that this is just a massive 5G super cycle. So any dips we see in Apple, in our opinion like this, uh, you know, we view as buying out. 400 bucks, you mean 30% over the next year? Yeah, I mean, I think we sit here December 31st, the stock has a four in front of it, in our opinion. Uh, let, let's talk about Uber. You've got a call out on that, too. You, you think the worst is over there, and you're actually adding it to one of your top picks. Yeah, this morning, adding it to our top picks list and, and going to $50 price. Sorry, there will be a report in later this week. I mean, let's just call it like it is. It's been a, it's been a nightmare for investors in Uber thus far since the IPO. But I do think, you know, the dark cloud's starting to clear because rationalization and pricing what we're seeing. You're starting to now see the profitability profile take shape for 2021. And the big thing is Uber Eats, because I think right now, as we've talked about here, it, it, this is a fork in the road. I mean, they sold the India <laughs> piece. So <laughs> but but they, they, they sold the India piece. But ultimately, they're going to real. Dara is really going to have to rationalize that from a profitability perspective. I think you put it all together. I love the risk reward here in Uber. I think this week's a big first step forward toward gaining street credibility. Can I just ask you? Oh, okay. go ahead. What do you think it's worth? I mean, my opinion, fifty dollars. Fifty. 50 how quickly? Twelve months. Well, I think fifty dollars by the end of this year. You and, think and, rationalizing though? Rationalizing Uber Eats means what? More sales, more places where the markets they back out of. I think if you look right now, the overhang between the Uber Eats, the lack of profitability, and AB five, the California legislation, that's about ten to twelve dollar overhang on the stock. I think we start to work through that this year, and that's why from, a, from an EV to rev basis or even from a free cash flow potential, if you look at five, six years, I think Uber continues to now be the risk reward. I think the worst is in the rearview mirror, in our opinion.